Okay, sorry guys, the announcements came on and it was a big ordeal, so I figured I would just film a little bit um, with a different video and then we'll splice it together. But, all right, for active transport, our last one, it's gonna be going the opposite way than the other one. So the other ones went, you know, uh, with our concentration gradient, went from high to low each time, you know, high to low. The difference here is we're gonna be going from low to high concentration. So we're still gonna need a protein. Now, most of the time, it's gonna be something called a carrier protein. But we can also use, every now and again, a channel protein. And the biggest carrier protein that we talk about is the sodium potassium pump. It's essentially like a Pac-Man looking thing where it opens up on one side, takes in whatever the solute particles that it needs, it'll take them in, and then it'll open on the other side, releasing them into the cell. So that's kind of how that works. Um, it's really, really hard for me to uh, demonstrate and draw, so I'm just going to give you a very simple example. So let's say we have Na+, plus, all right, and these, the uh, sodium and the potassium, Na and K, are the main ones we are going to move through active transport. These are the most common examples. So for this one, we're going to have our sodium down here. We're going to have our sodium up here. Let's label which one is low and high. Well, I got four on this side. I got one on this side. This is low. That would make this area high up here, okay? So we got one, I got four. We're gonna be moving from low to high concentration. So we're gonna be moving this way, okay? But the only thing is, in order to get that sodium to cross uh, through the protein, we're gonna need ATP to do it. So the ATP is gonna be chilling here, and he's gonna provide that energy in order for the sodium to move through the membrane, all right? That's pretty much everything with the, um, the main types of transport, guys. So the last one we gotta go over is osmosis. So let me erase this real quick. And we'll do some osmosis. So we're gonna have three different uh, types of osmosis. Now for osmosis, our main thing is that we're gonna be moving water instead of our solute particles. And this is because maybe the solute particles are too big to pass the cell membrane. So in this instance, you know, we're gonna be moving our uh, solvent. So this is osmosis. We're gonna have three types. We're gonna have hypertonic, we're gonna have hypotonic, and lastly, we're gonna have isotonic. So isotonic is the easiest of the three, so we'll probably start off with that one. Put our little beakers of water here. Okay. Let's make some water. I know it would actually be a meniscus, but make it this way. And we'll drop our cells in. Okay. So starting off with an isotonic solution. If the solution that the cell is put in is isotonic, what this means is that there, are the, there is the same concentration of solute particles outside of the cell compared to what there is inside of the cell. All right. What's going to happen here, guys, is we are still going to have a movement of water. Again, the solute particles are much too big to pass through the cell membrane, so we're still going to have a movement of, of, of water, but that movement is going to be equal. So water moves. in and out, okay? And for this, the cell stays roughly the same size. And that's it for isotonic, guys. It's, again, there is a movement of water into and out of the cell, it's just equal, all right? The other two are a little bit harder. Now, wherever there is more solute, that is where our water is going to go, okay? So I always say, think of hypo as hippo. Hippos are very big. If a cell is put in a hypotonic solution, that cell's gonna get bigger, all right? So the cell gets bigger for this one. Now, when we talk about a cell getting bigger, yes, it's literally expanding in size. It's going to be taking in water. So I'm gonna draw my arrows for water going in right off the bat, okay? 
Now we talked about wherever there is more solute, that's where our water is going to go. So if the hypotonic solution is gonna cause the cell to get bigger, it means water is going in, so there has to be more solute inside of the cell. Okay, so let me make a whole bunch of solute in here. Okay, maybe I'll just make a little bit out. So the cell's gonna get bigger. Now, if there is a lot of solute inside of the cell and the cell continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it could result, not all the time, but sometimes, it could result in something called cytolysis. Okay, and cytolysis, the prefix cyto means cell, lysis means breaking. It's literally the breaking of the cell, okay? So that's cytolysis right there, okay? And that's only for hypotonic solutions. That's the only one cytolysis is going to occur in. Our last one here for hypertonic, well, it's just gonna be the opposite of that. So we know that the cell gets smaller. In other words, it shrivels. So we know that water is exiting the cell. This is what happens to slugs when you put water on them. They are a whole lot of water on the inside, but if you put uh, salt on a slug, that salt is actually going to draw out the water. So there's gonna be a lot of solute on the outside and very little on the inside, okay? So the cell loses water, okay? Um, lastly, one more thing I wanna talk about. Now these, obviously, they are um, probably animal cells. They're round, unless they're prokaryotic cells. But nevertheless, if we we're talking about plant cells, um, plant cells have something called, let me write it in green so we know it's about plants, okay? Turgor pressure. And again, this usually applies to our plant cells. Okay. This is created by the force or the pressure at which the large central vacuole in plants exerts on that cell wall. Um, so both of these, both of these hypertonic and hypotonic are gonna have an effect on the turgor pressure. The difference between them is for this one, if water is leaving the cell, the cell is getting smaller. Obviously, if it's uh, in a plant cell, the vacuole is actually draining itself, so it has less water inside. Think of you blowing up a balloon. If you blow up a balloon, the balloon gets bigger and bigger and bigger, well, the pressure on that balloon is increasing, okay? But in this case, if the balloon is getting smaller, all right, like the cell is here, the pressure is going to decrease. So if a cell is put, a plant cell is put in a hypertonic solution, the turgor pressure is going to decrease. For this one, if it's put in a hypotonic solution, while well, cell is getting bigger, 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 hopefully it does not burst, but obviously it's going to increase our turgor pressure, all right? And that's pretty much it with uh, osmosis, guys. Again, just make sure you know we're only moving solvent here. That's it, we're only moving water in these examples. Um, for the other types of passive, diffusion, uh, facilitated diffusion, and then for our active, which is only active transport, we are moving our solute particles. So those move the solute, this only moves the solvent. And that's the end of module one, guys. We'll start module two in the next video.